beautiful. Who would wield it? Only the fiercest among us even could. And that is not you, Diana. You will train her harder than any Amazon before her. Five times harder. Ten times harder. Never let your guard down. You expect the battle to be fair! Until she is better than even you. But she must never know the truth about what she is. Finally, after many unsuccessful attempts, Wonder Woman has made it to the big screen. And this film was full of optimism, humor, and dare I say it, wonder. Sir. She's, she's a very good secretary. It is our wonder Woman, directed by Patty Jenkins and stars Gal Gadot, has opened to favorable reviews from critics and fans alike. And jeez, does it feel so good to finally say that for a DC movie, not just for DC fans alone, but for fans of female superheroes, as the past few female-led superhero movies have, well, not been that very good. Wonder Woman is a standalone origin story for Diana. And I was a bit skeptical at first, given that the past DC films haven't quite fully captured the essence of the characters. And I know not everyone is a fan of origin stories as well. But this one was necessary, as we get to see Diana grow and develop into the hero we know she is. It also has to emotionally invest into the cast of characters, which is something past DC films have not been completely successful in. What stands out about this movie when compared to the other DC movies is that this one isn't dark or gritty. This one is full of optimism, color, humor. Steve Trevor's secretary? What is a secretary? I go where he tells me to go and I do what he tells me to do. Yeah, well, where I'm from, that's called slavery. I really like her. Fantastic. Oh, Ladies, up for you. I do. I... We also see how Diana became this warrior for peace. And it is through the teachings of her mother, Queen Hippolyta, who would rather avoid conflict and wants to protect Diana and shield her from what seems to be her fate. And also her aunt, General Antiope, who is the best Amazon fighter and believes that Diana should be ready when it comes time for her to face her destiny. Which kudos to director Patty Jenkins, because to be able to balance a character like Wonder Woman who is a fierce warrior but also a compassionate one, is not an easy task to pull off. The film also fully embraces its comic book source and mythology, and it's something that could have been really cheesy and bad, but it just worked here. We have an island full of just women, and the Greek gods seem to have existed at one point. I mean, we even see the weapons that they have are created by the gods and given gifts to the Amazons such as the Lasso of Truth and the Sword God Killer. This is not your truth. The lasso compels you. Now tell us your truth. I cross-dress in a Wonder Woman outfit. It makes me feel powerful. <laughs> Embrace your truth, my friend. My outfit makes me feel powerful, too. Have you never met a man before? I mean, what about your father? I had no father. I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. Even the Diana's origin is straight from the comic book as it combines her pre-New 52 and 52 origins. Unfortunately, there was no invisible jet, but I hope it's something that they save for the sequel, because it's something that I really want to see. And another for my friend, Hannah. Well, whatever you say, lady. Just don't, you know, take my arm with it. Uh, here. Ice cream is wonder- Credit to the director and the writing team, as they put you on this journey from Diana's point of view, and you see how innocent and naive she is, and that she has a lot to learn about the world. And it's her simple view on the modern world and questioning of why things are the way they are, and not the other way, is what really sold me on being emotionally invested into Diana. I think that's what plagued the past DC films, as that you aren't given enough or any reasons to care for its characters, and Wonder Woman is the exact opposite of that. 
What made the movie remarkable is the chemistry among the cast. It feels organic and nothing is ever truly forced. To highlight an example is the relationship between Diana and Steve Trevor. Gal Gadot and Chris Pine, who was delightful as Steve, just clicked from the get-go. How could he say that? Believe that? And, and you! Was your duty to simply give them a book? No. You didn't stand your ground. You, you didn't fight. Because there was no chance of changing his mind. This is just Ares! Listening. And he's not going to allow a negotiation or a surrender. The millions of people you talked listen. about, they will die. We are Might going we... anyway. You mean you were lying? I'm a spy. That's what I do. How do I know you're not lying to me right now? I am taking you to the front. We are probably gonna die. This is a terrible idea. We're gonna need reinforcements. The relationship between Diane and Steve is a highlight of the movie, as you reach emotional levels you wouldn't think they would get to in a two hour movie. The humor between them was never forced, and it created some great sexual innuendos, and also some created some great scenes that just make me smile when I think about it. I also found myself enjoying the small moments between Diana and Steve, as it took the time to develop these characters and it also humanizes Diana and makes her more relatable because I mean come on, she is a demigod. And it's those small moments that get you to care and emotionally invest into these two characters all the way into the end. I think small moments is another thing that is missing from the previous DCEU films, and that is remedied here in Wonder Woman. Chris Pine really did a fantastic job as Steve Trevor that it makes me just a little bit upset he didn't choose to be the Green Lantern, but his character was never reduced to a sidekick role, instead he stood on equal ground with Diana. It was humorous to see him defend Diana at first, but comes to learn quickly that she is more than capable of defending herself. What I like is that Steve and Diana fed off each other and made one another better than before they met. Both bring a lot to the table and sort of guide each other through their unknown worlds for Steve and Themyscira and for Diana when she arrives in London. Another moment I want to highlight is when Diana finally becomes Wonder Woman and they fully reveal her in the armor. It is something that I saw before in the trailer, but there I was sitting in the theater fully astonished with chills going down my spine as I see her climb out of the trenches and stand up there heroically ready to take on these German soldiers single-handedly. I am Diana, Princess of the Amazons. I won't be denied. Ah! Fans have waited to see Wonder Woman kick ass and they get that and so much more as Diana lunges into battle and we see her use all of her weapons. Deflecting bullets with her bracelets just makes me giddy as a fan and how she uses the lasso of truth just shows how affordable she can be with it. The finale is the only part that's CGI heavy, which is expected given that Wonder Woman has superpowers. I just wish that they would improve the CGI from Batman vs Superman or at least hire a different effects team. However, it's not that bad that it takes you out of the experience and you still quite enjoy the action. Back to the characters, such as Etta Candy, Steve's secretary, is supposed to be the comic relief of this movie. But they never force down her humor into the movie and I think that she adds more than just being the comic relief as she shares a few scenes with Diana that seem to bond the two together. Also the team of Charlie, Chief, and Samir stand out more than just being side characters that due to the scenes Diana shares with them that humanizes them and gives you an inside look at what their lives were before the war. It also makes you care for their well-being. Villains is something comic book movies either nail or just fall short in. And I did enjoy the villains in this movie, such as Dr. Poison, who for the first time we get a comical based villain. But however, there are certain aspects of some other villains that I wish that they would have improved on and I think would have made the movie a bit better. Overall, the movie does provide Diana with a big bad for her to fight, and it would be nice to see this person to become a recurring villain. I don't want to give too much away with spoilers, but it's pretty fun. Another thing I want to highlight is Gal Gadot, who just owns the role as Diana and is perfect casting akin to Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Chris Evans as Captain America. I remember when she first got cast that she got a lot of flack. I wasn't sold on her either. But after watching Batman vs Superman, I can honestly say she was the best thing about that movie. I think DC knew that too, as she was front and center on their Blu-ray cover. Please, check out Wonder Woman. It's a fantastic film with a great story and cast and action, and it's a new start for DC, one that is bright and full of color. 
I give Wonder Woman a 9 out of 10 easily, and it's also the best movie DC has made so far. This has been my spoiler free Wonder Woman review. Thank you for watching Geek Night Reviews. Until next time.